All right, second gear, full throttle. Today we are taking my 2023 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392 on a road that's nicknamed America's Loneliest Highway. Now we're going to test out how this thing does on a super twisty road because US Route 50 is a very fun road to drive on, super popular for motorcyclists as well as sports car enthusiasts. And I'm going to see how my 392 does handling all those twisty roads. So it should be a whole bunch of fun. I know Jeeps like this are definitely not meant for any kind of handling. So we're going to put it to the test and see how well it actually does. As you guys know, 392 92 Wranglers are pretty bad with fuel economy but what I always say and what you guys know I always say about these Jeeps is that they definitely qualify for miles per gallon because of this never gets old. I actually am very impressed with how this thing has been handling all these twists and turns I've been driving on this road for probably about like two and a half hours now but this right here is just the start of the twisty section. So I wasn't doing anything too crazy. I couldn't really feel out how this thing would have handled turns. But like I said, first impressions, it's been doing very well. One thing I did want to mention though, is that whenever you are accelerating pretty hard, it does kind of feel a little bit unsteady. And that's because the front end lifts up just so much that the front end just feels a lot lighter and the steering kind of loosens up a lot. And you kind of feel like you do lose a little bit of steering control when that happens. Because of course, whenever the front wheels kind of, you know, get lighter, they lift up a little bit whenever you're accelerating hard, then it just gives you a little bit less steering control that way. Now, when I say the front end lifting up, I'm not saying that it's doing a wheelie, but you know, obviously when you're accelerating hard, then some of the weight is definitely gonna lift off of the front. It's just gonna make it lighter that way. Now on the topic of steering, it does have a little bit of play in the steering, but I mean, it definitely is very good at handling. I don't feel like it's an issue. I'm actually gonna put it in manual mode right now, see how it goes. Third gear, second gear. Yeah, you definitely do feel the engine like twisting. It, it's definitely very noticeable in a Jeep. With the Challenger, you can kind of tell because it has the shaker hood, but with the Jeep, you can feel the whole vehicle like twisting and turning. Some more turns coming up here. So I've mentioned this in previous videos, but one of my main complaints about the 392 Wrangler is the paddle shifter response time. So when I say that, I don't mean like the actual shift times, but the response time is based when you hit the paddle shifter to the time it takes the Jeep to actually shift. So the shifts themselves are actually pretty quick. Listen to this downshift, not bad. Downshift again, second gear. So watch this. So, you know, it's still pretty quick for a Jeep especially, but for a 392, I definitely would like it to be just a little bit quicker. I do another one here. So that's kind of what it's like basically. Not terrible for a Jeep, obviously, you know, a vehicle that's made for off-roading and not handling like what I'm trying to do right now. Yeah, so I mean the shift times are extremely quick, especially under load. They're, you know, very quick, very comparable to the Challenger, if not faster. It's just that sh paddle shifter response time is what I'm complaining about. So downshift to third gear right now. A nice acceleration going up here. Yeah, so you guys probably saw that time. It kind of pushed me to the right there because I was accelerating so hard. All right, downshifted to third gear. Nice turn coming up right here. And my MPGs are for sure dropping. I can visually see it. It's down to 15.2. The last time I told you guys about the MPGs, I think it was like 15.6. So it's 
definitely going down because we are going uphill as well and i'm also trying to have some fun with this thing too so that kind of explains it so like i keep saying it's been handling extremely well and like i said the only time that it ever actually feels just a little bit unsettled is when i give it more throttle like if i'm just turning and i'm not hard on the throttle then it definitely handles very well for a jeep the only time i feel like it's not that great is when i'm hard on the throttle because that's just when the front wheels get a lot lighter and the steering just doesn't feel as controlled that way i like the 392 wrangler more than i liked the challenger scat pack because with the scat pack you know it was definitely more fun on roads like this but with the 392 wrangler i can have fun on roads like this and then of course also take it off road with the challenger obviously i couldn't really take it off road and i was always super you know worried that i would scrape even on like a, just like a regular speed bump and you know it also had that front splitter as well in the front so you know obviously with the wrangler i can drive wherever i want basically i don't have to be worried about scraping on anything and it's also a lot more safe i think too because if i get rear-ended i have that huge spare tire in the back i have steel bumpers in the front and rear if somebody decides to hit me from the front then their car is going to get a lot more damage than my steel bumper so i mean overall i definitely do like the 392 wrangler a lot better than i like my challenger scat pack not saying i didn't like the challenger but i'm just saying i like the wrangler more because it gives me more freedom for how i can have fun with it and where i can drive all right so i want to show you guys what this thing sounds like with the exhaust valves closed here so i'm currently in sixth gear downshift to fifth right now you guys can hear the engine i'm going to hit the button can't hear it whatsoever one thing i wanted to point out with the exhaust valves though is that once you reach a certain rpm and you're actually accelerating hard then the valves will automatically open themselves up without even pressing the button but no matter if you have the valves open or closed if you are driving this thing hard and you pass a certain rpm then the valves will open and it will be loud so you can't completely control it but if you are driving normally and low rpms then you can keep this thing quiet like i have right now i'm gonna downshift to fourth gonna do a little acceleration and you guys will hear when the exhaust valves open and now they're closed so it's kind of cool how that works but i always like having them open so i'm going to open them up instant difference sometimes people use the exhaust valves whenever they're starting their vehicle up early in the morning they don't want to wake up their neighbors but with this 392 wrangler if you leave the exhaust valves closed and then you turn the jeep on then they will actually open up on startup but then close immediately so it still will have a normal loud startup but right after that just like one or two seconds after they automatically close back up so it's not a completely certain way to not wake up your neighbors they might still be able to wake up on the startup sound but you know they won't be mad for too long i guess so it's it's somewhat of a solution i guess i also wanted to mention that whenever it's in four cylinder mode you can actually turn that off by putting it in manual mode so putting it in manual mode just turns off the ability for it to use four cylinder mode when it comes to soaking up bumps i did say this in one of my previous videos but it kind of feels like this thing floats on a cloud like anytime i hit a bump if it's not like a pothole like a super deep pothole then it just glides right over it that's what it feels like if it's a super deep pothole then yeah i can definitely feel that i went over a bump which is completely normal i would say but for the most part it handles very well handles bumps potholes very well as well and like i said it just kind of feels like you glide right over everything kind of just feels like you're gliding over a cloud with this jeep and i definitely do think that it's an improvement over the previous generations of the wrangler because i did drive a jk uh, rubicon hard rock four-door wrangler as well and that thing was definitely a lot more stiff than this jeep right here so obviously the suspension has been much upgraded in the 392 version of the jl it's definitely a noticeable difference i would say all right so we're approaching a section here that is a little bit more bumpy but it also does have some nice twists and turns so unlike the previous section that we just passed with all the road work that section is actually super nice and smooth but as you guys might be able to tell this section here is just a little bit more bumpy but you know it's going to be fun when you have a sign that says suggested speed 10 miles per hour because of turns so i'm going to downshift here third gear fourth gear handling very well 
close so far. In fourth gear right now, we got a nice hairpin turn coming up right there. And I will say the engine braking with this 392 actually like slows it down a lot. So I'm gonna go down to second gear right now. Got a nice pothole right there in the center. turn it also helps a lot because these turns are also banked the correct way so downshift to third downshift to second another hairpin turn right here super bumpy by the way you guys can probably tell nice turn right here handling very well still that this is literally a Jeep Wrangler doing this. It's like not even like registering. <laughs> Way too much fun for a Jeep. And then if I wanted to, I could just take any of these back roads and take this thing off-roading too. All in one, all around amazing vehicle with a pretty good all in one price tag as well. All right, fourth gear right now, gonna downshift to third and second. Nice turn coming up here. Bunch of bumps right here. You can probably see kind of how it floats around. And the brakes also feel really good in this thing as well. Not sure what exactly they changed, but you know, I would assume that they made them you know, a little bit bigger and stronger to handle the amount of power and the amount of weight that this thing has. The handling capabilities of this Jeep definitely do not match the straight line acceleration capabilities of this thing. So you definitely just have to keep that in mind because if you're not used to something like this, then it definitely is pretty easy to get out of control and you definitely do have to slow down for turns more than you would expect. That's kind of what I've been noticing after driving this Jeep for, you know, a few hundred miles now around twisty turns. But this thing is definitely night and day difference when you compare it to a Pentastar V6 Wrangler. It just has so much more, you know, potential, more capabilities. And I think it also makes it safer because of that reason. Because if you're trying to merge onto a highway or there's a very short merging area then you would need more power to actually safely match the speed of traffic with a v6 pentastar wrangler in my opinion i thought it was very difficult to actually merge with that jeep and you know sometimes even very difficult to actually keep up with the flow of traffic if you're going up an incline for example so definitely like i said night and day difference between the pentastar wrangler versus the 392 wrangler all right second gear full throttle So that was Duffy pretty insane. It definitely put me back in my seat. Um, but I don't know if you guys heard that first shift from two to three, it kind of hesitated a little bit. I'm not really sure why it does that, but I've heard it do that on other YouTube videos as well, where people just accelerate and it just like stops for a second and then shifts. Now what I did there is I put it in manual mode, downshifted to second gear, and then once I gave it full throttle, I shifted it back into automatic mode so it would shift on its own at the most efficient shifting points. So I mean, it was in automatic mode, I'm just not really sure why it kinda, why there was like a lag time for those shifting times. And you know, like I said, I have seen that on other YouTube videos, but in those videos, they were shifting manually. So because of the paddle shifter response lag time, you shift it as soon as it hits red line, it's gonna lag and it's not going to shift because it hit red line. So it's kind of gonna like fall flat on its face and then take some time to shift. And then once it shifts to the next gear, it'll start accelerating again. That's kind of what it felt like there, but I'm not sure why it did that because it was an automatic mode. 
And then one thing I also wanted to point out as well is that you guys probably saw in the video is kind of like swaying back and forth. That's kind of what I was mentioning at the beginning of this video is that if you're giving it a lot of acceleration, a lot of throttle, especially full throttle, then it definitely does feel like the entire Jeep is kind of twisting and turning on its side. So definitely very noticeable, especially in turns. If you try to accelerate hard in the middle of a turn, then it's not gonna be super stable. You definitely do have to be very careful with that because like I mentioned, the weight does definitely come off the front wheel, so it kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to steer, makes the steering a lot lighter and a lot less accurate that way. But you know, you really can't expect much more out of a vehicle that's built specifically for off-road purposes. And I think it handles on-road driving very good. Like I said, it's very quick, very fast as well. I'm not sure what the actual top speed is. I believe it's 99. And then the non-extreme recon package is like 112, I believe. I haven't tested out the top speed. And I know when doing a rolling start, a lot of people will probably comment and say to just leave it in fully automatic mode and do it that way but I wanna start in second gear. If I just start right now, fully automatic mode, and if I just give a full throttle right now, it's gonna lag a lot more because it has to downshift from seventh gear all the way down to second gear. So by me putting it in manual mode first and downshifting to second, it just gives me a lot less lag time. I'm gonna to try to put it back into automatic mode a little bit quicker just to see if that helps it not lag in between the second and third shift. All right, second gear, 30 miles an hour. Same thing. All right, so as you guys heard, it still kind of had a bit of lag in between the second and third shift. Not really sure why it's doing that. I tried to put it back into automatic mode a lot quicker than last time, but it still kind of, you know, kind of fell on its face. And then once it shifted, got back to accelerating so really not sure why it's been doing that other than that i really haven't had any kind of issues with the transmission it's been great very smooth from my experience so far uh, but yeah that's pretty much my only complaint is that it lags a lot from second to third gear if you're giving it full throttle and starting from manual mode i also wanted to say when you're giving a full throttle you definitely can feel the weight of this thing 5100 pounds is definitely pretty heavy not light whatsoever and if you compare it to the non 392 wranglers i believe it's something crazy like a thousand pounds heavier than any other wrangler so i mean that v8 definitely does add a whole bunch of weight but i definitely think it's worth it i know i definitely had a whole bunch of fun driving this thing on the pavement now i feel like that's pretty rare to say for a jeep you know driving it on the pavement this thing is obviously made for off-roading and we do have some plans to take this thing off-roading very soon so you guys definitely don't want to miss those videos as well it's going to be a whole bunch of fun so definitely make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss those videos i also want to hear your thoughts on how you think the 392 handled these twisty roads as well i want to know your opinion so definitely drop those down in the comment section below and as always thanks for watching